In the prior videos, we looked at various voting methods to determine a winner in an election. We also saw an example where uh, the winner of an election may not be the candidate that would satisfy the greatest number of people. So take, for example, um, the Mac Club president election. So under the plurality method, A is the winner with the most first place votes. Uh, however, if you take a closer look, uh, you can see that 23 voters had A ranked as their least preferred candidate. So a strong argument could be made that A is the least preferred candidate and A shouldn't have won. So in this video, we're going to look at fairness criterion or criteria, uh, which looks at uh, what makes an election fair. And we're also going to look at Errol's impossibility theorem. Errol's impossibility theorem uh, pretty much says that there are no voting method that satisfy certain reasonable assumptions regarding voter preferences. So we had already looked at voter methods, but in this video, we're going to look at those reasonable assumptions regarding voter preferences and see how the voting methods, um, see if they, uh, they meet those reasonable assumptions or not, or where it may violate those reasonable assumptions. Uh, we're going to call these reasonable assumptions the fairness criteria. And we're going to talk about four of them. So the first fairness criterion is the majority criterion, which states that if there is a majority uh, candidate, then that candidate should be the winner of the election. So that one is pretty reasonable. Uh, it just simply says that if a candidate uh, wins the majority vote, majority meaning more than half, right? So if a candidate wins more than half of the um, votes, that candidate should be the winner of the election. But we'll see examples of where under certain voting methods, a candidate did win the majority. However, un under that particular voting method, um, they didn't win the election. The second one we're going to look at is called the Condorcet Criterion. So the Condorcet Criterion says if there is a Condorcet candidate, then that candidate should be the winner of the election. So recall a Condorcet candidate is a candidate who wins a pairwise comparison um, voting um, uh, election where the pairwise there's a pairwise comparison um, method to tally the votes, right? Uh, so if, recall that a pairwise comparison uh, involves comparing um, all the candidates against each other in like a head-to-head -head matchup, and the, the winner would be the person who wins the most uh, of those matchups. So the winner of a pairwise um, comparison method is the Condorcet candidate. Uh, the third one we're going to look at is the monoticity criterion. Uh, which states that if candidate X is the winner of an election, then X would be would still be the winner had some ballots were changed to rank X higher. So this one pretty much says that if we if there's an election and we dis, uh, we determine through the voting method that X is a winner, if uh, ballots were changed where X was rated higher and we use the same voting method, um, it should be that X would still be the winner. That's what this criterion is stating, uh, and it's pretty reasonable, right? If you rank somebody higher, they should still be the winner if they won beforehand. And the last one we're going to look at is the independence of irrelevant alternatives, or IIA criterion, uh, which simply states that if candidate X is the winner of an election, then X would still be the winner had a losing candidate not been in the race. So if you have an election and you count the votes and X is the winner. What this criterion is saying is that if a losing candidate drops out, if you recount the votes, X should still be the winner. So this table here um, is uh, pretty much summarizes the violations of um, cri fairness criteria, uh, right? It, it looks at the uh, voting methods we've looked at in this class so far, and it is going to indicate where it meets the criterion, or where it always meets the criterion, or where it can violate it. So for example, um, well, let's take a look at this preference schedule. So this preference schedule uh, details um, a race between candidates A, B, and C, 
where uh, there's a total of 20 votes, right? So if you look at the piles, if you count the votes in each pile, you'd get 20. Uh, and we're, we're going to look at to see which, um, how does each of these voting methods, uh, do they violate the majority criterion? So majority would be more than half, right? So in this case, majority, uh, half is 20, uh, half is 10, right? Half of 20 is 10. So majority would be greater than 10. Let's take a look at the plurality. So plurality, under the plurality uh, method, um, candidate A wins. Well, a majority is greater than 10 in this case, right? More greater than a half, and A does win. So under the plurality um Plurality method would would not or will never violate the majority criterion because a majority candidate is always going to get most the most votes, so they're always going to win under the plurality uh, method. So the next one is the border count method. So let's see if it can violate the majority criterion. Again, the majority criterion says the majority a person a candidate who receives majority votes is a winner. So here again, a candidate A uh, obtains a majority. Uh, let's calculate um, or let's see who's a winner according to the board account method uh, between A, B, and C. So using the board account method, if you guys recall, each of these place values are assigned a point. Uh, and the first, because there's three candidates, the first place votes are going to obtain, uh, get three points and then two points for second place and then one point for third place. So for example, let's go ahead and calculate A's points. So A in this pile, there's 11 votes. In, in each of these 11 votes or 11 ballots, A was ranked first. So in those 11 ballots, A gets three points. And then in uh, this pile, there's five votes and A was ranked third. So in each of those five, A is going to, actually I was gonna add it. So we're gonna get five times um, one point because A was ranked uh, last to get A gets one point for each of those five votes. And then finally, for each of these four ballots, A was ranked last as well. So A gets one point. So A gets a total of 42 points for the border count method. Now let's do B. So let's go ahead and copy this expression and we'll just change the points assigned. So the first pile with 11 ballots had B ranked third place. So B is gonna get one point. The second pile with five votes, ballots, um, had B ranked two or second place, so B's gonna get two points for each of those five. And then the last pile with four ballots ranked B first, so B's gonna get three points for each of those four ballots. So B's total points is 33. And now let's look at candidate C. So candidate C for the first pile, which contains 11 ballots, uh, candidate C was ranked Second, so candidate C is going to, get, going to get two points for each of those 11 ballots. Uh, for the second pile where there's five ballots, candidate C was worth ranked first. So candidate C is going to receive three points for each of those five ballots. <clears throat> and in the last pile, candidate C was ranked second uh, with four ballots. So that's um, they're going to receive two points for each of those four ballots. All right, so we tally it up and we're going to get that candidate C gets 45 points. B with 33, A with 42. Uh, so according to the board account method, candidate C is uh, the winner. However, that violates the majority candidate uh, criterion, which says that a candidate with a majority vote should be the winner. So summary, board account can violate the majority. Uh, for the plurality with elimination and pairwise comparison method, they both will, will always meet the majority criterion. So instead of going through each of these one by one, right? So instead of going through each of these one by one, I'll just give you where it violates or where it can violate versus where um, it will never violate, where it's always going to meet that criterion. So check mark means it's always going to meet that criterion. Um, can violate means there's a possibility that it can violate. Not always. There are ex examples where it doesn't, but then there are examples where it can violate. All right. So uh, to end this video, I'm going to look at one more example. And the example we're going to look at is uh, the example where plurality with elimination violates the monoticity criterion. So let's say there is an election and this was the uh, preference ballot for the election. Uh, let's go ahead and use the plurality 
with elimination method to tally the votes to see who is the winner. So we're gonna do we're gonna draw a little table like this. And if you guys remember with um, the plurality with elimination, we're gonna go round by one, round or uh, round by round. And in each round, we're going to tally um, how many first place votes each candidate gets. And at the end of the round, the candidate with the fewest first place votes is eliminated. Uh, and then we start a new round. All right, so for the first round, candidate A received seven first place votes. In this pile with seven um, ballots, candidate A was, worse, was ranked first. Uh, this pile also ranked candidate A first. So it appears that candidate A has seven plus two first place votes. So candidate A has nine first place votes in the first round. Um, and then candidate B is, was ranked first in this pile. So candidate B has eight first place votes. And then candidate C is ranked first place in this pile and there's 10 ballots. So candidate C received 10 first place votes, which means the uh, candidate with the lowest or fewest first place votes is B. So B is eliminated, right? So B is eliminated for the second round, which means for the second round, we'll just put a zero under B to indicate that they've been eliminated. Okay, so now let's recount the first place votes. So candidate A, still seven votes here for candidate A. Uh, also, um, these two ballots there for candidate A ranked him or her first. Uh, and that appears to be the only two piles. So candidate A has nine first place votes. Candidate C, well candidate C has the um, pile here, right, where candidate C was ranked first. But then uh, by eliminating B, these eight votes have been have moved to candidate C as being the first place um, candidate. So in this case, candidate uh, C receives uh, the 10 and plus the eight from, um, from that pile. So candidate C has 18 votes, first place votes. So it appears that candidate C is a winner. So C is the winner under the plurality with elimination method for this preference uh, schedule. Now, let's take a look. Now, what if the following happened? Let's say that um, somehow candidate C was able to convince uh, the two voters here to change their ballot to where they're, they rank C higher than A, right? So by ranking C higher than A, supposedly that's an advantage to C, right? It's a, it's a benefic, benefit to C. Uh, what the monoticity criterion says is if that happens, where, where C was a winner before, if um, the ballots were changed to where um, C is ranked higher, C should still be the winner. Right? or the winner from the prior before should still be the winner. Well, let's take a look. Let's take a look at this preference schedule and let's calculate or tabulate the winner under the preference, I'm sorry, under the plurality with elimination uh, method. So here's uh, that preference schedule. So let's go ahead and tally it. So candidate A, B, and C in round one. Well, let's see. Round one, A gets seven first place votes there uh, and that's the only pile right where A is ranked first place so A gets seven um, and then B gets well let's see B is ranked first in that pile so B gets eight first place votes uh, C gets ten first place votes in this uh, pile and then also two of these because they rank C as well first place so C gets 12 first place votes in round one and it looks like A has the fewest first place votes, which means A is going to get eliminated for the second round. So in round two, in round two, A has been eliminated. So we're going to put a zero just as a placeholder. Uh, B gets, well, let's see, B gets the eight votes or eight first place votes here in this pile originally, right? Uh, and then B also gets the seven points or seven first place votes here because A has been eliminated. So. Uh, so B obtains 7 plus 8, which is 15 first place votes. Uh, C is 
gets these 10 first place votes and then these two first place votes in those two piles. So C has 12 first place votes. But notice what happens. So it appears that B is the winner in this um, in this uh, election. So in summary, that violates the monoticity criterion because C was the winner beforehand. But when we changed the order here for these two ballots where C was ranked higher, C was no longer the winner, right? So that violates the plurality with elimination can violate the monoticity criterion. All right, so hopefully you guys found that helpful. Again, be very familiar with uh, the following. So be very familiar with this table just so you you know where where the possible violations can occur. All right. Um, if you have any questions, as always, please let me know and shoot me an email.